All right, so MT149, this will be lecture portion two, or you know, finishing up our, our lecture for the week of that two hour lecture portion. Um, so our, our activity here is gonna be drawing out our circuit at the end of our last lab. Uh, I, I thought about doing this in lab, but I think it, at this point it'd actually be better this way. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is get out a sheet of paper or, well, your, your lab, you can do your lab here. Um, draw it on your lab if you'd like, but make sure it's neat. Uh, and then what I'm going to have you do is take a picture of it, and you're going to post it up on Blackboard. Alright, so in this one we're going to draw out this shear plate, right? So your task here is to design a hydraulic circuit that will cause the cylinder to extend and retract using a single directional control valve. So one DCV, or directional control valve. The valve should provide extend, retract, and mid-position stop capabilities. So it sounds exactly like our, our cylinders that we used this week, this past week. So here we want to draw the circuit schematic using the symbols you have learned in this lap. So learning activity packet, that's why they call them laps. So start your drawing for the manifolds as shown in figure 69. So I'm not going to flip to that. But remember that your circuit symbols are drawn in the de-energized de condition. That's also known as the normal condition, right? So the normal condition is the de-energized condition or the condition that that valve is in when the machine is off. So not being powered, right? All right, so we want to draw our directional control valve. So I'm going to do that first. That's going to be essentially the one valve we need to draw for this circuit on top of the ones that are already drawn or actuators and valves that are already drawn for us. So I usually draw a rectangle and then this is going to be a three position directional control valve. So we need three boxes in here. All right, and we want to take, take our time drawing this. I know some of our drawing skills aren't the best. Um, just take your time. Use a pencil, I would suggest. I'm going to draw our ports. And the ports are actually connected on the inside. But in this case, our normal or de-energized position. Right when we let go of that handle in the lab, we got no flow. So this, this is, uh, right here, is going to be a blocked center for our normal condition. And this is what we draw to for our normal condition for our, our uh, actual circuit. So this is why I've, I've drawn the ports on them just because I know I want to do connectors there. And for our cylinders, our ports are on either side of our piston, right? So our, our piston here, we're going to have one port on either side and as we fill up one side with pressure, it'll force that cylinder to extend or retract. And the same thing with cylinder two. I'm going to put them on the same side. You can put them on different sides if you'd like. Just make sure that they're coming off of one end and the other, not necessarily off of the rod or off this end. It's going to be off this end or off this other side here. All right, so we have that drawn. And sorry, I, I guess I'm jumping around. I said I was going to draw the, the directional control valve first. So the directional control valve is meant to switch positions, right? Retract versus extend. So our first position is going to connect our pressure to say port A. So I'll just name these so I can call the ports. So we have port A, we have port B. Port P is going to be our pressure port or the port that's connected to our pump. And then port T is connected to our reservoir, the tank. All right, so we're going to have pressure connect to A here. And then on the way back, you, you know, B has to connect to something. So that would be our tank. And then we want this to go in the opposite direction, right? We have to have this crisscross. So that's why it shows in one side we have it going directly across. The other side, it crisscrosses. That's supposed to be an arrow. All right, so we have a crisscross here. And then we, w we just need to hook it up. So supply manifold, these are all the ports we can connect to, the, the quick connects you think of. 
So we're going to take that, we're going to come off of that with a line, and we're going to go to port P. And notice how I'm trying anyways, um, it's kind of hard on the tablet right now, but you try to go vertical and horizontal lines. So notice how I didn't go straight there. This is done for clarity. You had lines that are, you know, at all different angles, it gets messy. So this is avoided. All right, so we have our pressure and our tank connected to our directional control valve. Now we want to connect ports A and B to cylinder one and cylinder two. Well, the thing we have to do here is we want both retraction and extension connected together, right? So as we're putting fluid into this one, we want to be putting fluid into this one and vice versa. Here, if fluid comes here, we've got, got to have, have fluid here, right? So what I'm going to do before I even draw to the directional control valve is I'm going to draw our connectors. So in this case, I'm going to draw a T, right? That black period looking device. Draw big for reference here. But that's our T connecting the two. And then we're going to connect port A to that. And then for our bottom port here, I'm going to come around uh, this way here. And just so we know it's not connected to anything, I'm going to jump over, even though that's not a, a connector, a hose, or anything. And then that connects to this side. We'll draw another circle here. And I'm just going to go around this to make it neat. Neat as, as I can. <laughs> But that's, that's how we connect it. So we're connecting this port and this port together. And we're connecting this port and this port together. So when we push fluid, say, in this position through P to A, we fl fill both, both of these chambers and these chambers here go back to our reservoir. And vice versa with our, our third position down here. Um, the, the last thing I'll draw here is our our actual control for this is going to be a handle and then if this is in the normal position right we have to have something that keeps it there and in this case we have a spring so if we're drawing this like we had in the lab we have a spring on either end of that and that centers us right on the normal position all right but uh that's that's what i'm looking for from you guys so i'll let you guys go ahead and redraw and you can, you can do your lines differently, but just make sure when you're actually drawing over top of another line, you should draw a bump as, as if it's not connected, right? So otherwise, if the, the period or the dot here isn't pronounced enough and you don't make one, and you're just going crossing through it, and someone might mistake that as a T. And if you don't want it to be mistaken as a T, you do a bump as in not connected. Uh, otherwise, that, that's really what I'm looking for from you guys. So redraw this on your, your sheets, take a picture of it, and we'll post that right onto the Blackboard assignment for our Lecture 2 of this week. So this is similar to last week's assignment. And again, if you have any questions on how to submit or issues on submitting, let me know in an email, and we can look at it either over a Zoom meet or during next week's lab, we can discuss it, and I can show you on my computer how, how to actually upload a photo. Uh, but other than that, um, I guess that'd be it for this week's lecture material. Hope you guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week in lab. All right, later.